materialisms and historicisms. With the advent of post-structuralist and reader response theories, historical context became important. Critical approaches such as Marxism, feminism and post-colonial theory focused on the relationship between the text and specific social and political contexts. These contexts are impossible to understand without understanding the specific histories in which they function. The study of history in the conventional sense is called historicism. Readings that place a text in its historical context and discuss its relationship to real-world events at the time of writing can be called historicist readings. Greenblatt introduced a new approach to the relationship between literary texts and their historical context. Rather than seeing history as a context or background for the study of literature, Greenblatt reads both literary and non-fiction texts alongside each other. Greenblatt not only uses non-fictional sources to explain the fictional, but he also uses the fictional text to question some of the arguments made in the historical text. This new approach is what we call New Historicism. In New Historicism, there is no context, no background and foreground. Rather, the fiction and the non-fiction are both interrogated alongside each other. Quite often, this means beginning a piece of literary criticism not with the literary text, but with the reading of a non-fiction source, but analyzing it in the same way as fiction. This is what Greenblatt terms the anecdote. New historicism is about history as a kind of text that is as imaginative as a fictional text. New historicism in this respect is influenced by post-structuralist theories, like Derrida's famous statement that there is nothing outside the text, new historicists do not see the existence of a stable set of past events which history records. There is no stable historical context we can draw upon. Equally, there is no way in which the fictional text can tell us anything certain about the real historical past. All that exists are texts in discussion with each other. The term cultural materialism was first used by Jonathan Dolimore and Alan Sinfield in their edited collection of essays, Political Shakespeare. Like New Historicist's work, their book stresses the status of the literary text as a historical document and the need to read both types of texts equally alongside each other. Materialism refers to the text as rooted in the world. It is a political document that cannot be separated from the context of its production. For New Historicists, the parallel between the historical text and the fictional text is evidence of the fact that fictional text cannot exceed the historical context of its production. It exists of its time. This is in line with Michel Foucault's position on the idea of agency. Agency is the ability of a group or individual to act. For Foucault, agency is always an illusion because individuals and groups are always shaped by the powerful thought system surrounding them. So the text cannot be radical. In complete contrast to this, the Marxist approach to the literary text privileges it as a site of radical interruption. In contrast to Foucault's notion of discourse, cultural materialists employ the term structures of feeling. This idea was developed by the Marxist critic Raymond Williams. Structures of feeling are the values people live against those enforced by the state or by society. In this sense, they are the opposite of discourses because they represent a challenge to official or institutional ways of thinking created by individuals or groups in their everyday lives. While new materialists look for the places in which the text replicates discourse, 
cultural materialists see the text as a crucial site of these structures of feeling. For cultural materialists, the text reveals not a conformist attitude but a powerful site of transgression and political engagement. In new historicism, we are looking to uncover those places where the text falls back into the limitations of its non-fiction partner. So in cultural materialism, we are looking for the places where the fictional text exceeds and challenges the same non-fiction counterpart. For cultural materialists, all culture is part of the textual world. Cultural materialism broadens the study of literature to include other kinds of texts such as television, music and art. It also means that cultural materialism is concerned not just with the historical context of text but also with how our reading of the past influences the present moment. History then is an important part of culture in the present day and the ways in which we construct history through literary texts is an important way of understanding our current ideas and values. In the 21st century, the idea of materialism has once again risen to the fore. It is a term used to describe a refocusing of physical realities, the material, but with an awareness of the previous limitations of such thinking. New materialism is associated with feminist thinking in which the female body is a site of negotiation but also of radical possibility. This challenges the dominant view in much feminist thinking that holds the body to be a limiting structure primarily associated with patriarchal oppression. While a feminist critic might suggest that we think about a woman's intellect rather than her body, a new materialist feminist recognizes how woman has been trapped by bodily associations but then attempts to reclaim that body from previous representations. A new factor in new materialism is a shifting focus away from the human. Shared with post-humanism and eco-critical frameworks, this means drawing attention to the technological and the animal. But what new materialism in particular adds is a concern for the non-animal but living and the non-living. Shifting attention to the physical world means questioning the human focus, anthropocentrism of humanist thinking. In literary terms, we are used to narratives that focus on the human as the center of the story. While this in part can be explained by our desire to read narratives as mirrors of our own selves, it is also representative of a continued humanist belief that the human is the figure through which truth and meaning are delivered. More recently, narratives have begun to give the animal a stronger role alongside the human. It offers interesting new ways to think about the literary text to ask what role the non-biological plays, what the body means as an integral part of consciousness, and how narratives function outside the anthropocentric focus we often as critics employ in our analysis. One focus of new materialism can also be the materiality of the text itself. New materialism draws attention to the book as a physical object and how the reader's engagement with this physicality shapes meaning. So when we read as new materialists, we consider not just the text, but also the form in which we receive it, its illustrations, cover, weight or font, for example. One particular engagement with the materiality of the text is what is referred to as ergodic literature. The term coined by Espen J. Arseth in his book Cybertext refers to the effort required on the part of readers to read particular texts which force them to engage materially with the work. These texts are ergodic while those requiring only minimal user engagement are non-ergodic. 
As an example, Asad says that cyber text online narratives are ergodic because they require the reader to follow links and navigate web pages. In the same way, a narrative printed across installments in magazines can be ergodic because it requires the reader to find the relevant part across multiple sources. In contrast, novels are largely non-ergodic because they require simply a movement from the beginning to the end, turning pages and reading text.